Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. So, it might be a hard sell for him, but... Because I was like, you know, I mean, if worse comes to worse, I mean, I'm like... I got you, you could be one of the guys that stands there and just simply says, cause all you gotta do is like, you know, how are we gonna integrate? You don't have to tell them, yeah. you're just there to keep them focused. Right. Okay. So, I was like, but I didn't, I didn't volunteer to do so. That would be mean. And I'm not that mean. <sighs> oh. Dude, it just won't go away. No. Bill Freeman, oh my gosh, Marty Dean. What? What's up, fellas? What's going on? How is on? it going? It's our race, man. Jonathan. Jonathan. Norway in the house. Andrew. What's Dean up for Nana from Kentucky? Hello. Hi, Louis. Hopefully everyone had a nice time. Texas, Louisiana, kicking it. Woo woo. Florida over here. With a headache. How, yo, dude, total headache, yeah, man. Yeah. Right, right through here. Just, uh, we just been sitting in the dark for the last ten minutes, just trying to like, ah, oh, go away, mm -hmm. go away. Mm -hmm. UK, Manchester United. Hello, gentlemen. What's Hello, up, William. Uh, checking in from Loud and Clear. What's all Johnny? day long, Johnny from Loud and Clear. Wiley, Wiley, Texas. Wiley, Texas. I don't know how the hell I remember that. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, from America. It sounds, sounds like America. That movie. Wiley, Texas. No, it sounds like Wiley Coyote. That's okay. what you're thinking of. Australia. Wow. Macintosh. McIntosh, New York. Binghamton. Home of. Yeah, Binghamton, McIntosh. New York. Home of Macintosh. Got a cool jacket. That's all I got from that. Really? Oh, yeah. I've told you that. Yeah, but you uh, Have you had time to watch The Mandalorian yet? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. Yeah. I, you know. I watched the two episodes. I haven't watched yeah, the third, third one. And... The third one's actually better than the other two. But, like Haley's Oh, yeah, the third, one, third one, they, more people die, so it's all good there. Um, is it recommended to keep the factory amplifier on a 2004 Sienna? I mean, do you need to? No. Depends what you're trying to Yeah, see, it. like you said, Wiley Coyote. I mean, Wiley it's a Toyota. I, I, I mean, we're getting rid of the factory radio. If we're getting rid of the factory radio, it, it's an 04. So, I mean, we're doing a radio for speaker upgrade. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. um, but typically in that car, I think that's the one you just bypass the factory amplifier in. Hey, Mr. Lance. It might be. I wonder if that's the one. Lance, the boss DOS is in the house. Boss DOS. From Kelly. Yeah, yeah, if it's yeah. the one I'm thinking about, you pull the radio out and there's a harness behind it that's a 1761. So it's got the amplified harness here yeah. and it's got a 1761 behind it. Mm -hmm. I always just go to the 1761 and do away with the factory amplifier. If that's the one I'm thinking about, that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, such as DSP is better audio control or Audison? Audison or, or audio control? Yeah, Those, that's well, not even apples with apples. Either that's right. apples and oranges, man. Depends. Joshua from yeah. Loud and Clear in the House. That's two from Wiley Coyote, Texas. Really? Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. That was a good okay. one. New Hampshire. What's going on? Hampshire. He's from the Shire. Does he have hairy feet? Does he got toes? Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, that was Lord of the Rings. So two different customers. When you look at like the Audison Bit HD and you look at like an audio control DM 608, 10, whichever one you want. Mm -hmm. Two totally different customers. Uh, the Audison customer, I mean, two totally different price points. I mean, it's like one is double the other. Definitely. So it, it, it just depends. To say one is better, no. They're two totally different people that they're trying to hit there. Audio Control is going after 80% of the market. Audison is going after 20% of the market with those pieces. Now, when you look at something like a Nove, that's a little bit more reasonable. Um, then the, then the, the, the gap narrows, and then you also see a lot of features that are, are very similar. Mm -hmm. So that's that. Um, now, when we talk about the HD, the Bit 1 HD, yeah. it has so many, so many things. Yeah. So it's like... I mean, it's, it's you can do all kinds of crazy yeah. Iowa in the house. What's up, Facebook? Stupid Facebook, Robert Van Hoy. <laughs> okay. Did you? See, are you friends with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see the thing he posted over the weekend? I know. About probably. somebody gave him a crappy comment. It was no, great. I, I laughed. I, I read it in the morning. And I just I was I was doing my morning thing, and uh, I started laughing my ass off, um, which was funny considering I was doing my morning thing. Australia in the house. Uh, what is the best double din for under five hundred bucks? There again, not knowing what you're actually trying to go for. Right. 
Right now, real popular is the ILX W650. Yep. Um, if you're not an Alpine fan, you got the Kenwood 7706. Uh -huh. That's an, a Mechalis that's only 100 bucks more, yep. so they're right in that price point. Uh, check them out. And then um, today I saw the guy on the Pioneer 1400, uh -huh. which is the MVH 1400, yeah, which like is the um, old app radio, mm -hmm. just revamped and, and nice. Yeah. And it has. So. The Alpine and the Pioneer have capacitive touch screens, David Christian, whereas yeah. the, the Kenwood has clear resistive. However, the Kenwood, you can do iData, you can do dash cam, you can do front cam, you can do rear cam. So there's there's definitely things going on. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what's the brand of the Gromit that we use? I don't know what's the, the brand. From Pack? Yeah. Uh, but we buy we, we get it from Pack. We get it from Amp so, Global. Yeah. So Global. it's it's yeah. just yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Um, they, I just say I need these grommets and they send them to me. Hollywood, Florida's in the house. What's up? If an amp takes two gauge power wire and ground wire, do you use a dual zero gauge adapter would be okay? Oh yeah, that would be awesome. That would be cool, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the guys this weekend, I think it was Justin Murphy, was put up a post how somebody had found, or somebody's making, and I don't remember who it was, is making 90 degree post yep. for the audio control mm -hmm. amplifiers. Did mm -hmm. you see that? Mm -hmm. Or any amplifier for that matter, mm -hmm. whereas the mm -hmm. ground, I was like, yeah. immediately, I was yeah. just like, <gasps> ooh, and yeah. then I saw they were aluminum, and I was like, ooh. How do you feel about the C-types, thinking about doing an F-150 with a set of components and coaxial? So the easiest yeah. thing to think about with the Z-type is that if you have power, because you're gonna need it, and you're an Alpine fan, because you should be, uh, you're gonna love them. No, that Z type is pioneer. Z type is pioneer. See, I was thinking X type. I was yeah. getting all excited. Okay, yeah, yeah, so changing course. You don't need a ton of power. If you like a really, 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 really times infinity bright tweeter, times five thousand. Yep. Yep. Um, the Z type will definitely fit your bill. They have two models: the yep. good one and the better one. The H um, go for the better one. HC and yeah, I have something. no idea. Yeah. They're they're yeah. really nice. They're really loud. Yep. Yep. Um, we have pictures of. I'm, the I'm not. They're not did. something I would want to own because yeah. I don't like that overly bright, bright tweeter. Yeah. But you know what we have on the board is we have the Z's and we have the D's, and I really like that because it gives us the ability to, to really start off the conversation. It's like, okay, tell me which one of these you um, like, and then I immediately walk them over to let's say a Focal or a uh, Hertz or or a uh, Morel. Oh, the goo run. It's a uh, 3M strip caulk. Oh. <laughs> the goo! The goo, man! The goo! I, I, I totally I missed that one. Um, so the model number on it, this is the strip cock here, and what they're talking about, this is the never dry, black, uh, sticky sh stuff. Yeah. Um, the model number is 0857, so 08578. There again, we get this from Amp Global 2. That one too. Um, strip cock black is, is what it is. This is it right here. Yeah. Um, stinks, uh, but it never dries, no. and it's wonderful. Right, Cincinnati's in the house. Where do you get general? your ABS plastic from that you mount the amps to? So we get those from a local plastic distributor here called Farco. Farco plastic. Um, there's another. There a lot of places have. Uh, a, uh, there's a, another place called GE Polymers. A lot of the stuff you can actually find on Amazon. You can buy small sheets of like 12 by 24 or 12 by 12. Um, as far as like eighth inch goes, I know Metro sells eighth inch panels mm -hmm. that are 12 by 12. Yeah. Kind of small. I mean, you can go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can find it. Uh, I'm John? going to. I'm going to use an audio control D 4.800 with a Ooh. Z. Ooh, that's. With those Z's. Bright. If yeah, that'll that's that'll be that'll, power right those there. Will, Freaking scream! What's up, Mel? Because that's like 120 watts to those, so yes. plenty power, man. Man, you'll be you'll be you'll be driving like this. Ooh. Yeah. Or like this, yeah. Or like that, if you you know. If yeah. you like it, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, for me, especially right now. Raptor build looks baller. The Raptor build was insane. That was insane. That was insane. Yeah. Mel, do you know that they make a, a Matchbox car? Um, that you can put the uh, GoPro, uh, the little GoPro that I sent you, inside of it, and you can roll it on the track. Because I know he's a big fan of Matchbox or Hot yeah. Wheels, and they make a little GoPro session. You can put the GoPro session yeah, inside yeah, yeah, of it, yeah. and then you can drive it around on the Hot Wheels track or whatever. And um, I wanted to send him one with the GoPro, but 
I when I went back to buy it was gone, and I was kind of bummed. Nice. But then I saw it again yesterday, and I almost picked it up again. And I was like, uh, I took me like a month or two to mail him that, so I didn't know he'd never get <laughs> Next it. Next year, buddy. <laughs> uh, love the Raptor build. The Raptor build was a lot of fun. That was that was an interesting little thing for those of you that aren't familiar. You can find a couple pictures on our Instagram. We did film the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, just wait for the video. There, there will be a video on it. It's going to get bumped to the front of the pack. Let's talk about what's coming up here in the holidays. I have the Hot Wheels one. Awesome. Cool. Nice. Good. You have it. I feel better because I really felt disappointed about that. Come on, man. That's um, Mel. Yeah, I do. I know. Hi, Mom. That's Mom. Oh, Hi. hey. What's up? Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cool. Okay. Looking forward to it. I'll have to call you tonight. Um, Anyways, let's talk about what's going on with the holiday. Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Yes. is coming up. It's going to be Thursday. You're off Wednesday and Thursday. will be closed Thursday. However, Thursday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I think. I think um, it's at 10. Do we do it at 10? I thought we did it at 10. Do we do it at yeah, 10 or 11? No, that was at 10. I always thought it was 10. I 10 o'clock. was earlier, but yeah. 10 o'clock. 10, 10 o'clock sounds Well, funny. I got to get to your house and we got to go. Right. So I get to your yeah, house yeah, at like yeah. 9 o'clock. Yeah, that's right. So funny. anyways... 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. We're going to be doing our, I think this is like the fourth year we're, mm -hmm. we've been doing this, our live hour show mm -hmm. from the beach, from the uh, beach. of Dunedin, uh, where we, it's just a it's just a fun time. We Once answer again. some questions. We just yeah. shoot the crap. Haley will be there. She's going to make it, a, you know, like always. You know, we can't not invite her. So it'll be the live Thanksgiving Day show. So you can watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade and watch our show and everyone will have a great time as usual mm -hmm. it'll be fun i use the camera rocks awesome nice that's good i'm glad somebody's using that damn thing because mm -hmm. it has been sitting there um black friday sales right not my department, not my um, department. so anyways with that being said because of the holiday coming yeah. up you're going to get the wednesday video which is going to be the Correct. conclusion to the mercedes-benz yeah. uh upgrade that we did and then Thursday you'll get the live. Friday there'll be no video mm -hmm. because I, I just we won't have time with going to family and all that fun yeah. stuff. Plus you guys are probably doing something Black Friday, the whole nine yards. So yeah. and then we'll get back to you know Monday videos and fun fun stuff like that. Correct. And then we have the big trip coming. I I'm sorry. We as Haley and I uh, because Fernando is I can got yeah. the short straw. Sorry yeah. buddy. Uh, we have the documentary of audio control coming up. So on December 9th, Haley and I fly out to Washington State mm -hmm. to do a documentary for audio control. So Chris Bennett, so probably Tuesday because we don't get there until 10.30 at night. So there won't be a live Monday show, yeah. but there'll be a live Tuesday show where we'll have Chris Bennett. I'm gonna try to get Alex on the show, the owner of cool. audio control. So we wanna get cool. Alex, the owner of audio control, on the show. Um, so we'll do a live show sometime on Tuesday night. Yep. There again, the time difference is going to be weird. We'll figure that out. Yeah. We'll go live, of course. Follow us on Instagram at Five Star because that's where we're going to be updating a lot of that. I'll right. put out text updates on YouTube too. Um, but we'll be at Audio Control. We got two days there to shoot an awesome documentary. And then, of course, we're going to be doing a lot of five minutes with Five Stars while we're there, talking to all the guys and, mm -hmm. and hanging out. And then we'll come back, we'll edit it up, and just like the Kicker Show, we're going to be doing something special for you guys. So once the video gets up, we'll talk more about that. But we got a really cool idea that I came up with after the Kicker thing, because you guys know we went off the Kicker and then we came back and gave away the amplifier. So we're going to do something similar to that, just a little bit better. Because, hey, why not, right? Right. But that's going to be coming up here in December. So, of course, we're going to miss out on a couple videos in December, and then Christmas is coming up, which, Christmas you know, is and the week between Christmas up, and New Year's, we don't do any shows, mm -hmm. because it's just, it's just a, it's, holidays. it's a holidays is crazy. Yeah, like, uh, what features more Audison Bit One versus Audio Control? So, really, it comes down to a lot of the um, internal programming. So, there's three EQs built into an Audison Bit. So you have the de-equalization circuit, mm -hmm. which is a discrete equalizer. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's, let's, let's break this down. A discrete equalizer means that it is a dedicated equalizer that does that one thing. Audio control does offer de-equalization, but it's done through the main uh, EQ, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, it will de-equalize a signal for you, but then you're going to equalize on top of that same curve, whereas the bit, gives you a de-equalization EQ so yeah. that you can go ahead and fix all that craziness. It has the ability to take care of all pass filters. Um, it has the ability to add in, I'm totally gonna, anyways, 
It's got a lot more as far as that so goes. It has to be, yeah. Uh, then it has the actual multi channel EQ, which is 13. It's a 13 channel processor, so mm -hmm. it has 13 bands of, or 13 channels to play with, with an EQ on each one. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that EQ, it has a global EQ, they call which they call EQ. the main EQ. Mm -hmm. And what the main EQ allows you to go back and do is just like you can on like a DSR1, where you have basic EQ, which is the dumbest name ever. I hate you guys for calling it that. Um, you can go in and you have seven bands where you can, once you've figured out everything and get everything leveled and matched, if you're sitting there going, I wish I had more tweeter, instead of having to go in and adjust each channel those tweeter bands yep. you just grab it's seven bands of parametric so you just kind of grab where you think it needs to be and raise it up a little bit and just move it until you get it the notch way you want filter. it and you're done notch filter thank there you, you thank you lance um so the other thing you get too uh, that totally sets the the bit oh like pfft, away from everyone it's there's only like it, you can count them on one hand and you still have fingers left over is there's a technology uh called FIR and IIR equalization. And those have to do with your crossover points. Um, and it has to do with phasing mm -hmm. and whatnot. Now, if a standard uh, DSP is going to be an IIR style filter mm -hmm. system, and that's where you set your 24, your 18, your 12, link widths, Butterworth, bezel, whatever you want. And then the FIR, and, and, and IIR acts just like a passive crossover. So it's designed to give you the same characteristics. Like, it, you know, if you go 12 dB with similar crossover points, you're going to get the, the phase inversion. Um, so you cross over 20. So it's designed to act just like that, which makes things cool. Um, because we're all thinking that way. But the FIR doesn't play by those same rules. They have a very specific group of rules and I'm gonna be very vague on this because I don't understand it totally and they do a really bad job of explaining it in their owner's manual so and there again it's not their it's it's just it's a hard topic to yeah. like put yeah. in a paragraph and be like here you go so um, but uh, what that does is that allows you to it takes it from 13 band 13 channels of output to nine channels of output um, because I believe, and there again, this is just a guess, I believe it's doing some form of stacking, but it allows you to do 48 uh, dB um, crossover points with uh, the phasing issue just doesn't happen. It's really neat. Um, global EQ for the win, totally. Um, so mm -hmm. you have those basic things. And then you have a lot of other little hidden features like delay, turn on and off delay. And of course, uh, the bit allows you to do um, the the bit output. So you have the ethernet slash phone cable outputs that go off to their bit amplifiers. So you can do a full what's called DA system, which is, uh, you know, we ran Toshlink out of the nav TV A to B piece, which is fiber optic into the fiber optic input of the ample, uh, I'm sorry, into of the bit. The bit. Mm -hmm. Now the bit also has two fiber optic inputs that are two dedicated sources. So if we ever wanted to, we could go back in and add in some form of other fiber optic input, whereas their handy audio control is one. Different customers. Um, and then coming out of the bit, you go with the with their cables into their amplifiers, and that keeps everything digital the whole way through. So there's no analog signal mm -hmm. until you come to the output of the amplifier. So that is your analog out. So everything is just, like there's, there's no floor noise, <laughs> Because there's no there's no real gain structure to mess with. There is gain control, but that's it. Um, so uh, it, it requires, requires more power to do FIR. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of we don't want to dig deep into that. Like like he said, don't go to the. Yeah, we don't want to get deep into the FIR because yeah. it, it's like and, and they wrote the same paragraph twice inside the the manual when they were talking about FIR, which I had to laugh because I read the manual. Um, but so there's a lot more thing. It's it's a different. It's a different thing. So, you know, I'm going to use a Macintosh reference with Apple computers. So you have the uh, the Apple Mac and then you have the, or you have an iPhone, an iPhone Pro, or you have, you always have the Pro version of something mm -hmm. um, that is esoteric and very specialized. That's going to be that processor, okay? Now, the Nove gets you more into, or Nova, uh, it depends on, that will get you more Nova. into closer to what you're going to get when you buy mm -hmm. the, um, when you buy the audio control. Those are more similar, okay? See, they, rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So those, are, those are more similar, where, you know, and they're more closer in price points. Okay, so let's let's stop All right. talking about I Checking a, in from New Hampshire. Well, I have a Pioneer ADP RS. Mississippi. And how do you, in an audio control, the 6.1200. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And I follow the recommendations from audio control on the settings, on setting the input gain with the clipping light, I can turn it off to the plus 11 dB of gain before the clips okay. comes on. Seems wrong. It could be wrong. Yeah. So here's the thing you got to keep in mind when setting your gain control, okay? And this is this is one of the things that um, uh, we, we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Stop we were talking audio. about an article that Andy... Uh, um, Audio from Texas. Audio Frog Andy. Andy yeah. Which... And why am I... I always, Winmeyer. Winmeyer. Thank you. I always want to say Weimariner. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. Winmeyer. I don't know. It's, it's just so what sticks close. in my head. Anyways, and one of the things that Andy was talking about, and this is one of those things that, that it's hard to translate out, but um, right. when you use just one specific frequency, let's say 1,000 hertz or 40 yeah. hertz, okay, basically what you're doing is you're saying these are the two frequencies and these are the only two frequencies. If there's any form of pre-equalization done to those two frequencies, those two frequencies are not going to work as a good point. Mm -hmm. What you should be doing is doing a signal sweep with a uh, oscilloscope or a, first a digital multimeter and figuring out where in the heck is the loudest point, what frequency is putting out my loudest point, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say your loudest point is 1500, okay? Well, 1500 is here on let's say it's three or four dBs louder than a thousand Hertz mm -hmm. and you're testing for a thousand Hertz Okay, so this is what you're using for your zero point But every other thing in there is three to five dBs louder. All right, so as you start to do this Now you've yeah. added This is way and this is at you know, your negative five. Well, this is now 15 mm -hmm. or 10 or whatever so doing a, a you know, th these are things that it's like, now that we've all figured out that we need to start checking our gain structure, now we can dig a little bit deeper into actually figuring out how this actually works and some of the things that are, are going to be necessary in order to figure it out. Like, we're, we're set positive on 1,000 hertz. Great. What if Pioneer has a pre-equalization done in there where 1,000 hertz, there's a dip? Okay. So, hey, from Orlando. picking up an oscilloscope. Yeah. Something like the, the, the 211 the or the Lumi yep. um, isn't a bad idea. Yep. And then having a tone generator, there again, once you have, see, this is why a DD1 won't work for this because you're going you're gonna to be not using 1,000 hertz. Right. Um, but hopefully you guys are kind of getting where I'm going with this. But the, the digital multimeter and the sine sweep will tell us where our loudest, loudest point is, and our sine sweep is going to tell us what frequency we're on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, that is one aspect of it. Now you have an 80 PRS, it's a, it's a flat output. Um, you look at an RTA and it's perfectly flat, and there's no peaks, there's no everything, and you can keep turning it up. Well, if there's no clip on the output, go for it. Yeah. I mean, you know, that input on that DSP will take like 20 volts of input. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's gonna allow you to use all of it, but it will take 20 volts of input, right. so you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, all right, so I have this one. I have a 2011 Camaro. I plan to mount the Rockford Fosgate T1005 in the spare tire well. Yeah, Do good you spot. Think... Yeah, definitely. We're that, we were talking about Yeah, yeah we were talking, we're about, talking today. about today. We actually did one today. Yeah. We were just talking about it. Uh, as far as what's the difference between all those types of crossover settings, that's not anything we can get into with an hour show. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I would just suggest Google them. Uh, it really just comes, what it, what it, in a nutshell, what it has to do with is the round point here, mm -hmm. and that's it. So how fast it transitions from the signal where you're at mm -hmm. to the down slope. That transition is where a lot of that comes into play. Um, so that, I mean, that's the generic. Yeah. Uh, can't get my 211 to work. Really? Mm, that's crazy. Ah, send it back. Have you guys ever heard of M noise instead of using pink noise? Heard of brown noise. I haven't heard of M noise. Send a link. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, your thoughts on Ken with high res amps, specifically the five channel. Enough. That'd yeah. be the 9001.5 or 901.5. Love it. Oh, Love it. Five channel, yeah. 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 I, dude, listen. Both Kenwood Exxon amplifiers, the 901, the 801, mm -hmm. those are two of my favorite amplifiers, man. You get a lot of power, they sound great, and they're priced right. Uh, they don't have turn on and off pop. They're a good size. The only like like anything else, you gotta like oh, there's gotta be something, you know. 
So the thing that people complain about on the 801 point or 802 or whatever the heck it is, yep. uh, 0.5, the 8 series, is that they use screw down terminals. So you have to put a fork terminal on it. People complain about that, which I don't understand because it's like it works just fine. Um, and then on the 901.5, oh, and the base knob on that one is optional, so you got to pay for the base knob. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the 901.5, the base knob is on the totally opposite side of the amplifier. So that's another thing that some people are like, well, that's kind of dumb. But it was like, okay, no base knob or base knob? Well, I'll take the base knob. So, and it does come with a base knob. Those are really the only yeah. things I've ever had to complain about about those amplifiers. But other than that, love them. Honolulu in the house. What's up? Uh, well, MyerSound.com. We're glad everything's working with the Pioneer Radio, man. That's awesome. Uh, Francisco, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> have you hear about the M noise? Yeah, that's what the yeah. it's MyerSound.com. Yeah. Okay. So I'll have to check that out. Okay. Uh, which Apple CarPlay receiver do you think has the best sound quality? Apple CarPlay. That would uh, be the 9906. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have the 9906 in my car, and it's just... Right. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is so if we're talking about CarPlay, mm -hmm. you have wired, and you have Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi. So I like the wireless. I like I'm the not going to lie. I like the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is really nice. Mm -hmm. Hawaii in the house. I'll be there this summer. Yep. Um, so if we're doing the Wi-Fi one, then you're going to look at that. Other than that, for the most part, it's, it's the same. If you're plugging in over USB, I mean, Correct. then it just comes down to yeah. features inside the radio. And even still, you can get it to a, a 7706, you get all the same, or an 8806 or 8906 8, or whatever 80, the hell it is. Yeah. Um, it still get all the cool features, just not the wireless. Alabama, uh, for real-world loudspeaker SPL measurements... Yeah. We'll promote standardized measurements of loudspeaker maximum linear output. Well, that's one watt, one meter is pretty much, you know, okay, I get what you're saying. Um, okay. Hello from Gulf Shore, Alabama. Alabama, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. To say, how I was your weekend? Honolulu, yeah. Okay, yeah, you yeah, I said Honolulu. Yeah. How was your weekend? My weekend? Yeah. My weekend, that was, that was good. Yeah, I saw Santa. Yeah. Uh, kid, we kid went, went to see Santa. Santa, Santa <laughs> Claus, yeah. Who remembers that? We asked for a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, a mathematical delivered test signal that effectively emulates dynamic characteristic of music. M okay, M noise enables more accurate measurements of the loudspeaker systems. More accurate measurements. So there's something. Okay, there's. All right, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, there's also another way to do that, but I can't talk about it because I can't talk about it. But um, some other people have some really cool stuff that they've actually made that allows you to do that, but I can't talk about that either. Yeah, I have uh, a brown sound. Yeah, brown yeah. sound. Yeah, it's in the yeah. morning. Um, Dean, how bad do you want to put That's a what I system to. <laughs> into a Tesla truck once they hit the road? Uh, I don't. I mean, if we're going to talk about the Tesla truck, I think it looks stupid just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, I personally feel it's a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel a lot of people feel that way too. It just seems like it's a joke. It seems like he's bored, he's rich. Um, and he came out with this that's not going to be the finished product. If that truck hits the road, I think we're all yeah. just going to be sitting there going, Oh, wow, no, that wasn't a joke. Damn. That is just some prick right there. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just a, it's just an insult on our eyes. Let's be honest. I mean, uh, currently running three amps in network mode. A JBL 400, a Cento tweeters. Um, Cento, okay, thought JL. Looking to upgrade a DSP, I was either thinking of DM810 or PXE805. What will be what better? What would be your better choice? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, obviously, you're going to want to play with the software. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean towards the DM810. Uh, only because the software is way easier to use. Yeah. Um, but they're both great DSPs. Not a fan of the software on the PXE 800. I mean, that's the one I have in my car. Yeah. And every it, it's a tool. The DSP is a tool, and you have to know how to use the tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. If the tool is hard to use, you, you don't use it. And you find a better tool. And what's better um, tool for you? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we use pink noise set gains? Because pink noise is not an accurate representation of the threshold of the amplifier. Robert, you gotta follow, follow Andy. He goes through a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff he's written papers on on um, uh, Audio Frog, but it, it's not an accurate representation of. It's not used for that. That's it's the easiest way to say it. Um, plus, it's all all frequencies. Yeah, it's really weird. Have you ever done a Tesla? No, no, we haven't. Okay. Um, it's just one of those cars. We talked about it before. Sometimes we just it's weird. Like with all the Jeeps that we do. We need a ton mm -hmm. of Jeeps. Like, yep. Jesus, it seems like we do a Jeep a week. The JLs? And F-150s. We, yeah. we, don't, we don't see any JLs. No. Um, 
The new F-150s, we see those all the time. Yeah. It's just weird, like Camaros. Like, we didn't see Camaros. Like, when the Camaro came out back, I... <sighs> No. Dude, it took like four years before those started showing up in the bay. It was yeah. really weird. I mean, some guys get that stuff right away. I don't know. It's, it's um, odd. I, I mean, personally, I haven't heard the uh, MBX six and yeah, a half speakers. Have I. Yeah, no. Uh, you switch carefully Android off your wireless. Oh, does it? Oh, that's cool. Nice. Thank you, Bill. There you go. Um, cool. I didn't know it did that. Hmm. There again, I don't really get into the uh, waiting for a 2020 kicker key mm -hmm. offering. Yeah. Uh, no tool for me. Um, Hang on, I was watching this. Yeah, we'll just leave that one alone. Oh, you already read that, read one. that one. Yeah, yeah, yep, read it. It's all good. Okay. Uh, any new products for the show, for show and tell? Um, no. Actually, this week was... Tune in tomorrow. We may have something that we can talk about tomorrow on the on the five minutes of five star. Um, we, we we got a box in today. Some of it we can talk about. Some of it we can't. Uh, but we'll leave it at that. So I do right, trucks yeah, almost yeah. daily. Right. Uh, I guess it's a Texas thing. <laughs> no, I mean we do trucks all the time too. I mean, literally, it's the yeah. flattest state in the country. And we get so, so many, many trucks. trucks. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, you guys see them. But you the guys, time. Texas, I understand, man. Yeah. You guys, everyone should be driving a truck in Texas because let's let's be yeah. honest, it's a Texas thing. I mean, I would. I mean, why wouldn't you? It's big open roads. Probably got big parking spaces. Have to be a law if you're in yeah, Texas. You got to drive. You got a cowboy hat and a truck. Uh, working on 2018 truck. Camaro right now. Oh yeah, fun. It is Woo. fun. So there's three different models of the Camaro. And you have the base model with the crappy screen, mm -hmm. and then you have the base model with the amplifier in the trunk, and then you have the Bose system. Personal favorite is the one with the amplifier in the trunk. Um, it's the one that sounds the worst, but it's the easiest one to integrate into. Right, right. Um, yeah. Have you guys worked on a 12 RAM radio? Yeah, yeah. We do a lot. We do a lot of RAMs. Uh, no, not a 12 inch ramp. Oh, 12 inch ramp? Like no. a new one. No, not no, yet. Actually, we have somebody waiting. Yeah, we actually had somebody waiting um, uh -huh. to get it done. We just, yep. they're just in the, they're in the queue. Um, <laughs> the you know, and it, that's a simple, of tr th that truck is simple enough to do now because it'll take an Amp Pro mm -hmm. and the ANC bypass is available from both. Um, so we have both Maestro solutions for it and both Pack solutions and, and they're full complete. So yeah, correct. it's like, boom, done. More Rams, less Fords. I agree. I, I've owned three Dodge Rams, man. Yeah. So I, I totally understand. Uh, when are we going to do more 911 videos? Um, believe it or not, uh, I I don't. We haven't filmed any in a while. It's been kind of nice. No. No. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna start. We, we're almost well, I mean, done with the with the videos we have recorded. We're gonna, mm -hmm. of course, the the the. Oh. Raptor is going to get moved to the front of the pack. Correct. So we're going to edit that one. Once we're done next week, that you'll, you'll see that one start to roll out next week. We'll get that one going. Yeah. Um, Crazy has some... Oh, yeah. Florida, dude. For, yeah, we have some really stupidly tall trucks. There's no question about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, but we I can barely, the I can one barely one jump while. on one of those, man. It's um, crazy. The only 911s we've done recently, we were so pressed for time. It was just like, we're not filming these because we Whoa, just got to get them out. Yes. Like how you guys see in the five minutes and five star, you know, it's just like, okay, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a uh, Subaru. Don't see, don't see a ton of them here. Uh, when we, uh, when we do Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yes. Um, we don't see a lot of much either. Actually, when it's funny, we went we got... to Colorado, we saw nearly every other car. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hippies. Hippies. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, any tips on how to make speaker adapters? Hold on. Speaker adapters without a router. Jigsaw? Jigsaw. I mean, dude, jigsaw with a scroll blade, mount the, uh, get, yeah. a, get a scrolling blade for your router. Yep. I'm sorry, for your jigsaw. Uh, mount your jigsaw upside down into a, a piece of wood yeah. and just use it as a scroll saw. I mean, why not? I mean, that's, it's, dude, if you're really like can do this really well just use a roto zip or a hole saw um, from Quebec. but the thing i would keep in mind is okay so you don't need you just need a router you can literally go to lowe's or home depot and pick up a 59 dollars router yeah 
You can buy the bit on Amazon, a, a, a spiral bit with bearings for like 20 bucks on Amazon. Total cost, $70. The only other thing you need is a set of, you need a piece of quarter inch hardwood so that you can make a mount to mount the router in upside down. You can adjust it whatever height you need and you're good to go. You don't, you don't need a lift and a vacuum system. and You, you just need the tool. I mean, the router right there, the, the, you have the, the Bosch one that's first and that router right there. I got that router when I was in high school from Sears. Yeah. It cost me 59 bucks, okay? I still have it. It's insane. Yeah. It also ripped half my finger off, but hey, you know, I hold no grudges. Okay, I'm gonna say, Ed, I have the same problem. Right now, Facebook is acting crazy. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, 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 I can even see the, the, uh, the comments. Oh, okay. So, uh, but it's, yeah, I don't know, man. I, that's what I was looking in my phone too, to read your questions, but no, I can't. Facebook is awesome. It is crazy We'll right do the now. best we can. Yeah. My feed isn't updating. Our feed is updating though, so we keep getting questions, so you don't have to stop. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know. Everything is uh, fine in here. It's in the phone, can't, I guess. Can't wait but... to see the cyber truck with a sound system. I just, I still don't think it's gonna be real. I don't think it's real. I don't think. I don't think Harbor gonna come Yeah, Harbor that. Freight, there you go. Harbor, pick up a Harbor Freight router, you can pick up a bit at Harbor Freight, 70 bucks. You can pick and I get it. anything it's like, in there. It's like 70 bucks is a lot of money. Don't, don't get me wrong. However, if you're planning on doing this as a hobby or in, in start doing your buddy's work or whatever it is, yeah. pick up some tools. Dude, yeah. literally, I've had that thing for 30 years. It's done so much for me. Yeah. And it's made me a, an ungodly amount of money. So, whatever. Yeah. Gotta have the tools, man. <laughs> Gotta have the tools. That's what I'd say. Stupid, Stupid Facebook. Ah, <laughs> uh, got you, Robert. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Uh, and it's awesome. interesting scrolling comments. Yeah. All right, well, we're, luckily we still have comments working fine here on ours, which is weird. Because, no, because we use it now. Um, yeah, the webcaster is usually the first thing to take a crap. Yeah, correct. So, I'll bring my car down in its current state, 911 Rescue. <laughs> 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 you probably could drive it with no problem. Yeah. Um, Ryobi at Home Depot, 69, really nice. Exactly. There you go. You know, dude, cheap tools. Love cheap tools. Harbor Ray install bait. Oh, yeah. Dude. I like it. I like dude. the name. You know, it's funny. Uh, McNulty always posts um, when deal. Ha Harbor, Harbor Freight deals. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, we okay, we did a whole show about this not too long ago on Five Minutes yeah. to Five Star, so it's in probably one of the rebroadcasts where yeah. it's like, look, man, it's real simple. You can go buy a set of snap-on screwdrivers for 350 bucks. And hey, if you got nothing else better to spend your money on, go for it. But if you open that drawer to your toolbox and you don't have a $350 digital multimeter or oscilloscope or a DD1 or an RTA, RTA. Yeah, or any of that other stuff and you're yeah. buying a $350 set of screwdrivers, you need to take one of those screwdrivers and bonk yourself on the head with it because <laughs> that, would be awesome. that screwdriver is not going to make you money. No, 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 it's no. not going to do your job for you. It's not going to make your life better. All it's going to do is give you the ability to go, oh, look at my cool snap-on screwdriver. Ooh. Back and there again. again, I'm not a snap-on hater, a Mako hater. I don't mind them all. I love their tools. They're shiny as hell. Oh, yeah. You put me in one of those trucks, I'm like, oh, and I just have to walk out because it's not a realistic thing for what we do. I don't need any of that crap. I don't, I'm, I'm not building cars here. I'm right. building stereos. All the you toolboxes, know. you know. Yeah, I don't need Same a $35,000 toolbox. I need a $1,000 or $1,500 uh, cobalt toolbox. It's the same thing. It's going to, okay, it's the same visual thing. They're There's not the built the same and they're not as good. There's no question about 600. it. Um, but it gets the job done. All and, right. You know, whatever. Uh, stop. I'm stopping. <laughs> tools. You guys are it's my 601 EX supposed to switch from Sirius XM to Bluetooth every time I get a text. No, it's not. My previous Pioneer. No, no, it's not. Uh, check to make sure your yep. 601 is up to date. That sounds like a serious update issue. Anytime you buy a radio, I don't care whose brand it is, when you buy it, the first thing you need to do, the very first thing you need to do is check for software updates. Yep. You can go to the manufacturer's page. I will say Alpine is the worst. There's no question about it. There's sucks. Yep. Um, but you want to go to Pioneer. You want to look for your model number radio. Just type it into the little search tab on the top uh, right hand like side. Right here. Yep. Um, you know the AVH or Ace, whatever. Yep. Uh, X, you know. Okay. And then in the middle, when that radio pops up in the middle of the page, it's gonna say like manuals and and all. And the last thing will be downloads. Click it. It'll take you to the bottom of the page. And you can look at that number, and then you go into your owner's, you go, not your owner's, man, you go into the radio and go in, 
go into the tools, Thank scroll you, down to the bottom, and then it'll be like my radio or something like that, and then it'll say software firmware, and it'll tell you what it is. And if they don't match, update them. Yep. And that usually fix silly stuff like that. All right, can the key? Yep. Power King with Exelon, XP Yeah. Oh God, yes. We did that. Yeah. Uh, we did that the other day. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So for well, those we who don't, went, uh, we went um, full active. Full active, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 So no, no rears. One of one of the things with the kicker key is that it will do bi amp mode. Okay, so this is a kicker key, seventy by four. It's an EQ DSP amplifier for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what it is, and it's all done magically. There's a microphone that comes in that plugs and beside it right Jason, here. Jason, Jason's in the hole. Oh, I know, buddy, you're late. What the heck? Uh, there's a head, a microphone that sits on your headrest that aims towards the ceiling. Doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense how it works, but trust Fernando. Uh, he knows what he's doing, not this one, the guy that actually built it. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyways, so what you do is you, when, as soon as you select buy amp mode, you hook your tweeters or mid-range, whatever it is, up to channels one and two, and then your mid bay up to three and four. And it knows that it needs to look to see what's on channel one and two, because as a microphone, it'll play the tone, it'll say, okay, these are tweeters, okay, these are mid-range, it'll actively cross them over to where they need to be, mm -hmm. and then you get full active. It still has gain controls on it, so you can adjust the gain, can adjust the gains. It has peak lights or clipping lights built into it, so like a oscilloscope DD1 style input section, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it is a real amazing amplifier. It gives you a perfect center stage, uh, it EQs everything out. There are no adjustments to be made. It's strictly like tune and done. Uh, it's quite magical. But yes, we have put this on a set of the kickers, and we were like, <sighs> "Yeah, really? I mean, why? Why do we even do this for a living?" Yeah, I mean, probably we can make a video on the 211 one day, man. Yeah, no, definitely. it was it was I mean, planned. That's, that's that's a plan, definitely. It's planned. Because we did the Lumi, so we'll do the same thing for the we did. We'll do the same yeah. thing. All right. Um, I have two amps with the DSP. When I tune the amps with the DD1, do I unhook the, the DSP from the amps, or can I tune the amplifiers with the DSP connected? Um, you can tune the amplifiers with the DSP connected, because obviously you're gonna. Be, you just have to make sure that you that you're that. You, okay. It really depends what your source unit is. If your source unit is a factory radio, mm -hmm. then you need to look at the DS. You need to see what's coming out of that factory radio first because yep. really using a DD1 on a factory radio might not be the best thing to do. And, and like I said, if you go back and listen to the first part of this, this video, we talked about why. Um, but you, you have to see where your peaks are first. Mm -hmm. If you're going with an aftermarket radio that shouldn't have any peaks, you have to make sure the EQ's flat there, your EQ's flat here. Um, but yeah, you can use it that way if you're just doing your gain setup. Um, <laughs> you... MS8 light. <laughs> what? But, no, it's nothing. Go ahead. Uh, okay, do you think the Pioneer single DIN stereo quality is different from the earliest 2000s? Uh, oh. Yes. Compared to the today's. oh yeah yeah oh god yes man uh, yo it's totally different um, you know every every year they they tweak things and make things sound a little better sometimes for the better sometimes for the worse better doesn't always mean better better for us the the end user um, right now pioneers probably got the best sounding product that they've ever had. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys are PRS-80 junkies. They haven't updated that radio in six years. And in six years, they've come out with so much new tech um, for that with audio-grade components and mm -hmm. all these just upgraded things. Now, yeah. sometimes they say things like manufacturers say, oh, we've made it better and we've done this. And the reality is, is no, they just figured out a way to make it cheaper and package it in a shell that sounds amazing. But, you know, uh, looking back over the years... Yeah, I, I feel like what they have now is definitely better. Yeah. Um, How much was the Raptor build? It was enough. I don't know. Well, there again, we don't we don't deal no, with that. I mean, you kind of no, look at the point. product through Google search. Yeah, exactly. And figure out how much it was. Just, just check the prices you know, of. Yeah. And then yeah. So. Just think about it. Uh, the CarPlay update on iOS 13 is amazing. Really? Yeah. It's been sucking for us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I like the new features. But we've had a lot. This is probably the most headache we've had with CarPlay ever so yeah. far. So, mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. Yes, my single DIN Pioneer took a dump after nine months. Was... Okay, well, so now we're talking single DINs, man. Single DINs are, are like seriously cheap. What is a single DIN? Yeah, I know. 
Um, but anything with a CD transport, okay, now, now if we want to talk about CD transports between, yeah. uh, you know, eight, ten years ago and CD transports now, the new ones, I would not want to be putting a CD in one of those because, mm -hmm. I mean, it is the biggest piece of crap. I mean, they have really figured out how to make this the cheapest CD transport on the it's planet. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure most of it is just, built they probably have such a big buffer in there that it just doesn't you'd never be able to skip it because it's probably reading 10 seconds into the future and can auto correct all that crap oversampling as it were called back then oh does it have eight times oversampling yes it does I, you notice no one says that anymore that's funny uh with the process progression yeah, yeah. With the progression of the dsp the adp rs is silly it is totally silly i, have I mean one in the dsp yeah yeah i yeah. mean Let's be honest. I mean, what, what what do we need a PRS80 for? When we just get a nice DSP. I get the idea behind a PRS80. Oh, I just that was don't get that the was idea good back PRS80. in the day. I mean, when dude, I'm going out of a. <laughs> okay, so if I'm trying to build a system that's just like, oh my god, I'm getting a DSP and I'm gonna feed it with something that has a, a Tosh Link output, you know, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. play some really high res FLAC files or some crap like that. All things that the PRS80 does not right. do. There again, not a hater, just don't understand the hype anymore. Uh, do you guys have those Audisons in stock or the customer, customer had them? We are an Audison dealer. Yep. Uh, we actually stocked the Voce 5.1, but he wanted to go full DA, so that's the 5.1 um, okay. something else that yeah, actually okay. comes with the uh, the, uh, the adapter the, the adapter built into it. Uh -huh. um, otherwise, you have to pull out the RCA section and put the DA section into it. Uh -huh. um, but they sell it now complete. So we just ordered new amps to go into that. Yep. Um, with Audison, they're, they ship out like fast. So there's kind of no point in stocking if you don't have to, something like that, that you're really only gonna sell a handful of a year, if you're lucky, uh, where they can just get it out to you in three days. So, and it's not like a system like that, we're just gonna, a guy's gonna walk in and be like, I wanna do this in my car. And if he does, that's fine, but he's gonna be leaving his car for three days before we start on it. Um, P, uh, let's see, what, what, PRS-80 by today's standards. PRS-80 is for old dudes stuck in the 90s. <laughs> or the 2000s. But yes, I get what you're saying. Uh, POS-80 by today's standards. Dude, the Bluetooth in it is useless. I don't even, does it even have Bluetooth? It's useless. Uh, it was a great piece, and I'm not knocking it, but mm -hmm. it's just not relevant in today's world. But it is a comfort zone with everything. You know... When we talk about all this equipment, and you guys ask these questions, we answer them. We talk about DSPs, and we have all oh. this, and there's, and then you go like, "How come, guys? Uh, uh, you are a great Austin dealer. We try, man. It's we massimo. try. It's Massimo, mm -hmm. the man. That's the man right there. See you in Orlando. We stand there in your booth, holding hands, singing Kumbaya. No, we're we gonna won't. holding hands. No, we're not going oh, to. We're just okay. gonna be there, going, everyone, come over <laughs> here and look at this stuff. It's neat. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, because remember, in Orlando, we'll be in the Audison booth, mm -hmm. so all the shows will be talk. We'll be talking about Audison. So really excited about what we have coming in the if future. If you guys are going to um, Knowledge Fest, if you're a dealer and of course manufacturer, either way, we're going to take everybody yeah, with us. So we're going to talk yeah. about it. So it'll be a lot of fun. I can't mm -hmm. wait. I can't wait because we. Wait. I'm excited because I just want to. I want to get out of the shell of what we've been going to. So, right. um, anyways. I, I got yeah. sidetracked. So okay. uh, Lanzar Opti 31 band. Yep, 31 band. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lowe's. 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 250 hertz. I have three, three. Q factor. I mean, Q factor uh, as an example. So okay. if we're talking lows like a lows. subwoofer, I would, you know, like 70, 50? 80 hertz is, is where I want to be. Um, that's it. Yeah. Uh, what shoes you box do you guys use on your large multi amp build? Stinger? Yes, we've been using Stinger. Uh, like the ones that were in that, the ones that were in. It comes down to space, okay? So if we have the room, I much prefer to do the new Stinger X fuse holders because mm -hmm. I can build them out the way I want. So a lot of the times I just need three distribution for or three blocks so that I can put six of those in a row. I get three power, three ground. Um, but in this case, they wouldn't fit. You saw how much room we had. We did not have the room to fit all that big X style. Mm -hmm. So we have a backup for that, which is just the regular Stinger. Whoa. Um, that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, and there's a four and a four, and they're kind of the angle, and they look they look like the Tesla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, really, they look like the Tesla truck. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason why we went four is because 
which you'll find out in the video. Um, we needed two for the amplifiers, we need one for the DSP, and then the fourth one is that the NAV TV, if you have certain problems with it, one yeah. of the things they recommend is going to an external power source for it. So not wanting to pull the whole thing apart in the end if we had a problem, we just went ahead and ran our feed for the NAV TV uh, piece, and if we didn't need it, we, we, it's just tucked over there and it was good. Hey, Big D up? in the house? That's Big D in the house, I guess. Big D in the house. All right, cool. I don't, I don't see it. So like, like, like yeah, I no, said, it's just going crazy. It's just going crazy right um, here. So make sure you guys go check out last week's interview with Jeff Smith that uh, him and Vega talk. that him and uh, Vega did. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Um, mm -hmm. really good. And they gave us a shout out in the end. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Because they were talking about difficult things and how. Um, yeah, some of yeah. these guys they they, <laughs> they say they. Yeah, it was pretty. These cool. guys from Five Star are good. And um, so I don't know. Thanks, man. Um, or as Steve <laughs> said, five car stereo. Five. <laughs> uh, they still make records. So why do people knock CDs but love streaming considering quality of stuff? Uh, so yeah, they do make records, Robert. I got to tell you, uh, uh, Haley owns <laughs> Haley owns five Kiss records. One SpongeBob record, one Beauty and the Beast soundtrack, nice. and they're all hanging on the wall in record album 12 by 12 frames mm -hmm. um, because she likes Kiss and the album covers look awesome. So, and then SpongeBob is the same way. It's a big SpongeBob orange yellow, and I bought that for like her birthday or Christmas or something. But yeah, she owns records. We don't own a record player, but they're all on the walls. But I thought you you own something like Star Wars. I have laser discs. No, right. I have I have laser discs. Right, exactly. I have all this. I I have a laser disc player, so I have all the Star Wars original laser discs, and they're like three laser discs long. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. Uh. How much better is the Audison DSP versus the DSR One? Oh, pff, no, not even a comparison, no, man. No, That's not no, even no. a conversation no, worth having. No. Um. The DSR One is a, is a tool. It's a great tool hey, to there have. There he is. And, oh, there he is. What's uh, Derek? Um. It, it, it's a wonderful DSP to have. It's a wonderful price point. If you have an iPad, it's way better to use. Christopher yesterday was when I was talking to him, Artie's son. Um, he's trying to do it on his Android, and mm -hmm. I've never seen it on Android. And I, he was showing me all the. And I'm like, dude, just buy an iPad. This sucks. Yeah. Okay. It I heard that. I heard bad. the in the Android. Uh, it's I horrible. Or, yes. It's, it's horrible. Bad, it's yeah. horrible. Mm -hmm. But no, there's the. It's not a fair comparison. So it's not even worth talking about. Um, hey, Dean Fernando from yeah New Mexico <laughs> <laughs> wants to purchase a kicker key. Uh, kicker key eight eighteen oh four. Uh, okay, Kenwood components. Yep, Jack. Uh, what do you think about a setup for my Honda to be connected to the factory stereo? First thing you have to find out about the Honda the factory stereo is is it the base model or is it the premium sound? If uh -huh. it's premium sound, kicker key isn't gonna work. If it's a base model, this has four channels of output, kicker key's fine. Mm -hmm. um, you can do four channel out of a kicker key, and it works great. That's what we did in Haley's uh, Ford, mm -hmm. is we went components up front, or yeah, components up front, coaxes yeah. in the rear, powers everything wonderful, added in a sub. That's it. Um, it, was, it was great. Mm -hmm. we had, it, it sounded wonderful. Uh, but that's really the only hiccup in that. That's a nice system you got put together there. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to know what system do what you have system in the car? Is. If it doesn't yeah. have the factory sub and it's just four channel output, you're golden, go rock all day. Pick all up right. a T harness for it from Access, uh, metroline.com, make yeah. your life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. If it has the premium sound system in it, um, which it shouldn't because it's a Civic, but if it does, that's going to change things up yeah. a lot. Ah, uh, where are you talking awesome, about the Q Class coaxials? They're awesome. You know, I mean, it's a nice speaker. It's a yeah. nice, it's a nice all-around speaker. Um, my biggest complaint with the Q-Class speakers is that they're coaxials. Yeah. Like I want a six by nine component, and I've been every when I was there, pretty much all I did was talk around and go, um, "When are you guys coming out with a six by nine component? When are you guys coming out with a six by nine component? Hey, is anyone coming out with a six by nine component?" And they were like, "What the heck? Anybody who hasn't seen Dean's five star tour of Kicker, you need to watch this. Thank you, Derek. Yeah. Uh, I think they've got one. He's got one coming up. I think they filmed. I know they took pictures. I saw that they took pictures and everything. Him and. Um, we should call and talk about what they got to see. Yeah. Um, okay, so I got this one. Hang on. Uh, any car you refuses to work on? Yes, yes, there What's are. Uh, old cars. So here's the deal. Um, when you bring in a car, if it's a new car, fine. If it's a recently, you know, within, let's say, 18, 20-year-old car, that's perfectly cool. However, there are certain cars that people want to do things in, 
that will destroy the car if we try to work on it. So for example, like if you bring in like an 80 series Cadillac, 80, you know, 1980s Cadillac that has um, all the little grills in the front and you want to replace those four by sixes up in the top of the dash. In order to get to those, I have to pop the factory grills out to pull the screws behind it. To pop those factory grills out, they're going to shatter when I go to do that. They're going to break into a million pieces. So um, when we take cars in that are older, we look at them and it's like, okay, this is going to break, this is going to break, this is going to break. There's no way we can do this without breaking those. So we immediately have that conversation with the customer because Paul doesn't. And we say, hey, look, in order, you either A, have to find replacement parts for these or we can't do this install. Uh -huh. And if they're like, well, you know, can you try? It's like, no, they are going to break and I'm not going to be responsible for them. So from that regards, I, you know, it's like I'm putting it in their hands. You know, I've had guys that have said, oh, no, go ahead. You know, you'll be fine. I'm not worried about it. And you break them and they're like, dude, you broke it. I said, I told you I was going to break it. It literally had this conversation with you. I don't want to have it again. Yeah. You know? And you know that's the end of it as far as I'm concerned because I've already told you they're gonna break. Um, the only car that we run into now is the Nissan uh, pickup truck, the Frontier and the Pathfinder uh, that has the removable top bezel where you gotta pick up the little, little cover here and then you gotta pull the whole thing off. That, uh, there's a 50-50 shot that, that is going to self-destruct and we've already bought one that self-destructed on us. So it's like now every time one of those comes in, we have to sit down with the customer and you can almost see the stress cracks in them when you're looking at them. So I'll be like, look, let me show you this. There's a crack here, there's a crack here, there's a crack here. Okay, when this comes out, this is going to break into a million pieces. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm -hmm. If you want me to do it, fine, but we're not gonna be replacing this part for you because Nissan made a substandard piece. So yeah. really that's the only time we run into an issue where we won't work on a car is that when it's not worth doing because it's just going to fall apart in our hands. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes it's unavoidable, um, you know, but like if you're talking like disgusting cars that come in filled with crap, Paul doesn't give a shit. Um, well, I mean, we've had cars where we've literally had to put stuff outside because we didn't have enough room to fit all the garbage that was in the car out of the car. It's, crazy. Um, it's ridiculous. So, but you know, and that it, honestly, it, it pisses us off like mm -hmm. really starts off a bad install because we're angry because we just had to clean out your car oh yeah um, it's just not fun no you know and it's like i don't you know but to no. to paul he doesn't he, it's like whatever bro just clean it out i want the money um and it's like you know we had we had one guy that just like lost his crap because we had to pull all of his stuff out of his car and i was like dude you had an appointment you knew you were coming in and he took everything out of his trunk and he put it in his back seat. Yeah. And it was like, well, the, the closest way to get to your battery is through your back seat. So we right. got to pull all this, you know, pull all this stuff out. And we didn't put it back in the way it was. And, and he just like went oh, crazy no. on us. And, and it was like, yeah, um, I'm done with you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Uh, and this is probably like any bad customer stories. It's just, just like that. Exactly. Uh, you know, there's always bad customer stories, mm -hmm. um, but it, there, you know, the thing is, is, is like most of the time you can avoid bad customer stories with communication. I'm a firm believer in talking as much as possible with the customer before we do anything. Before the guard. Um, sometimes I don't get the yeah. benefit of knowing what the heck is going on, in which case I got to call the customer. But I want to ask as many questions as I can, kind of figure out what the heck is going on so I can avoid those type things. Obviously, I've been doing this 30 years. I got some really amazing stories of some really bad stuff that has happened mm -hmm. over the years that is totally unavoidable. But, you know, I had one installer that worked for me that got mace sprayed in his face. He, he got mace, literally got maced by a customer. Um, that guy is lucky that he didn't die. That was Bauer. He would have killed that guy if he got his wow. hands on him. Oh my God, he would have killed that guy um, and not thought twice about it. Uh, I wish customers think ahead about the junk in their the junk in their trunk. Oh well, um, you know that's the thing. It's funny too because like if I take my car to get it worked on, I empty everything out of my car. You know, it's like I. And like we say, you know, we have customers that they already have appointments, so it's not like they don't know. Yeah. They're like, okay, yeah. next week I see you. All right, next dude, week. That when 1990 they in, Dodge they Ram, brittle as crap. That's not yeah. it, dude. We've had we've had those Rams come in mm -hmm. that there was not enough material left to even hold the radio in the dash. I mean, like you could there there was nothing 
is the front trim bezel. I mean, it, there was there was literally nothing. I was like, dude, ha. Uh, you're, it's gonna sit in your dash. There's nothing I can do to mount this in your car. Uh, finally, a double thing kit for a 19, like 95 F150 after, after I'm 38, <laughs> right? And we did the video on that. It was um, fun. And and the whole time I was doing, it, I was like, you guys, you realize I have to cut. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Leroy, uh, we don't have the model number, but if you can go to access.com, type the model number. No, go on to Metro. Car. Metro Online. Metro Online. Online. Yeah. Com. yeah, that's it's fine. Good. It, it's like a Honda one or two. Yes. I mean, it's, there's only you, you type two the model ones. number of your car, and they, they, it's going to pop in. Yeah, anyway, it'll pop yeah. up through the T harnesses. Just keep scrolling down until you find it. It'll be there. All right, guys, that brings us to an hour. It's Monday. It's fun day. What's up, uh, Jason? We didn't go live today, but we'll go live tomorrow. Yep. Um, Dean, did you ever make your own RCAs back in the day? Of course, Greg. I mean, yeah, didn't everybody? You had to, man. Big ass still. coaxial. Still make them now, but not yeah. like, no, we're talking old school style, right. man. Like, yeah, it was funny. Um, all, right. all right, guys, DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can find all the cool tools that we use. Uh, Patreon is a place you can go to support the show, and you get your name before this, and, and if I can remember, we put up podcast because, yeah, we suck. Uh, <laughs> is there? Uh, Teespring slash store slash five stars is a place you can go to find apparel. There will be more new apparel coming up, hopefully. And now with the holidays coming up, I get a little bit of downtime. I have an so. idea for new shirt. Oh, good. Right All right, guys, that's it. That's fun. Thank you, Jason, for stopping by and saying hi. Wiley, Texas is where you can file out and clear. Uh, uh, Marty Dean, you can pick up your Aussie Iron at AussieIron.us. Don't forget to check Jason. Um, Stereo, Stereo Kings, King, Oregon. Oregon. Mm -hmm. And, of course, FrostbiteBoxes.com yep. is a place you can go to find cool boxes. Big news. Right? And don't forget, we have the trip for Audison. I'm sorry, trip for Audison. We have the trip for audio control yep. coming up. Hanley and I are going to go do a documentary there, so that'll be coming up December uh, 9th or 9th and 10th. 10th will be live from audio mm -hmm. control. That'll be fun. So we got a lot of neat stuff coming up along with the holidays. Oh, and don't forget, Thursday, 10 o'clock, we'll be live with our annual Thanksgiving Day show. Thanksgiving. Looking yeah. forward to it, guys. You guys yeah. have a wonderful week. Be safe, be fun. We'll see you back here Saturday or tune into our five minutes with five star on Instagram. If it's not five minutes, but it's nope. fun. And we answer a bunch of questions. You guys have Lift a great is time. Cheap. <laughs> lift is cheap, y'all. If you need to get it, dude, if you need a lift home from work because you had a really good lunch meeting. Yeah. Alright guys. We'll see, see you, you later. later. Bye. Bye. Oh, nice. End the show, man. Here. It's all That's you, bro. Right. Hang on. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yep, there you go. That's it. Hang on.